The mini PC market has been shaken by some big announcements recently, so can Intel's most affordable Twin Lake platform make any difference? Billing's latest, called EQ14, is running it, and you're right. Time to inspect. Hi everybody, welcome, great to meet you. I'm the Tech Michigan, this here happens to be among the first mini computers running Windows 11 Pro and are based on N150, the new Intel budget-friendly CPU from their Twin Lake product line. It comes with a lot of promises for decreased power consumption, very optimal good balance, especially when it comes to performance of the CPU and the GPU, and seamless integration with your smartphone, something that kind of reminds of the promises staying behind the Mac Mini, the new generation which was released a few weeks ago, and this is why I'm here, in order to perform a lot of tests, show you a certain amount of real-life use cases, and go through all these little tiny details in order to reveal whether all the marketing promises are matching the actual real-life experience. Let's dive into it. I'm happy to speak about the performance as a starter. We did mention Apple's Mac Mini, so let's say we're in a totally different league. It's not easy to be among the first makers adopting a new platform, especially when it comes from Intel, and as usual there are a lot of pros and cons. Among the benefits are of course the expected increased performance, also the efficiency. What you will for sure experience is that the N150 is an entry-level processor, so here the price is the top priority. The CPU will get stressed even by basic tasks, such as opening large videos or quickly switching between multiple windows and tasks, let alone more intensive operations, such as video editing. I'm afraid that the gaming experience will disappoint, especially if you have too high expectations. Good news is that unlike most mini PCs with N100 that I've tested, this one can actually run Counter-Strike 2 at Full HD resolution with the lowest possible graphics settings, with some hiccups from time to time and average frame rate below 20, which for most gamers is not good enough. On the other hand, more basic games, such as beach buggy racing, are gonna run like charm, but generally you have to avoid anything that has demanding graphics and effects. If someone is interested in the results I got while running the 3D bench testing, feel free to reach out, I'm always happy to help and support community projects. As for video editing, from my standpoint, it's a no-go, maybe some basic quick edits with cap cuts would be working fine. Clearly, the platform is better than the older N100 and N95, but nowhere near Intel's Core line or AMD's current Ryzen offerings, which is perfectly fine given the price point and the product placement in Intel's portfolio. So, if you want us to brainstorm about some use cases, here's a chance for you to share about your own plans and ideas. This mini PC being quiet would make an excellent file server or become a multimedia station. If you want to use EQ14 for office work, like presentations, playing multimedia, basic photo editing and so on, then it's a perfect match. Pretty sure that given the dual LAN setup, some folks are going to utilize it as a firewall or a router or flash some other kind of operating system. If you plan on keeping the licensed Windows 11 Pro, then better think of office tasks, learning activities and less demanding computing duties. We will of course dive deeper with the specifications, but let us check the build quality and the design beforehand. This looks nice. The box is small, not too spectacular, perfectly in line with Beelink's best practices to deliver gear to you in a safe and sound way. Looks like the new wave of their designs is spreading across the portfolio. This is always a good sign, means maturing and growing. Quite many ports on the back, most of them are USB. We do have two pairs of HDMI and LAN both. On the front, a Type-C and a Type-A for USB, an audio jack, a power button and an LED. There continues to be no VESA mount at the bottom. I think it has to do with the new way of implementing the cooling, but you can still be creative and figure out a way to mount it on the back of a monitor with the remark that it could be somewhat noisier as opposed to being placed on a desk. The specs about the components inside, and here you partially are already aware of some of them, a quad-core CPU, DDR4 RAM up to 16GB as the maximum, Intel UHD graphics, upgraded active cooling system, inbuilt power supply, two slots for SSDs, and even some nice goodies coming from Intel on a software level. Speaking of which, the operating system is Windows 11 Pro. 
I think we can be very straightforward about the summary of the specs based on all the tests performed. It looks like the N150 is an incremental upgrade over the N100 processor line because the advancements are there. Not as big though. Luckily, Intel keep the same kind of price point and the same kind of very optimal power consumption. There are other components which we can call corners cut, such as the fact that we have a single DIMM DDR4 inside, while all the Twin Lake processors are supporting DDR5, meaning that it's a missed opportunity. Probably B-Link have their good reasons to reuse DDR4 technology in there. Likely they keep it because of the very convenient price. As for storage, well, it's not too great. Probably, um, it has to be because, well, that's a high-end storage module. Uh, just to give you an idea, the price of this one is greater than the price of the entire computer itself. We also have an improvement with the iGPU, higher clock speed. As you can notice, you can feel this with gaming, especially when we compare it to N100. Insignificant again. So apparently we do have some corners cut. Now, I'm really curious to make a teardown together with you and figure out whether we have some corners cut when it comes to the internal layout and find out how far we can go in terms of upgrades and repairs. Unlike some others, B-Link continues to be very relaxed about system upgrades, but there are a few catches here. Well, access is for sure really easy, no hidden traps such as wires attached to the bottom or whatsoever, plastic, all right in this case, easy access to the single memory module. According to B-Link, 16 GB is the maximum capacity. This DIMM seems to be made in their own factory and is not delivered by Crucial as it is for some other models. Similar with the storage drive inside, the operating system recognizes it as 512 gig device. There is no further info about the model. The stamps on the capacitors also sound rather unfamiliar. I had to check on the power supply as well. It is very compact indeed and quite hard for me to rate anything about its design and grade of components. Time will show about durability. Overall, unless there's an issue with the CPU or the system board or the PSU, you can replace some of the components. Upgrading based on the platform makes no sense in my opinion. And I'd certainly go for B-Link's proposal for a unit equipped with hardware as opposed to buying the bare-bone one. As for connectivity, things are well. Wired LAN works great, the wireless just alright. You don't get the latest and greatest in terms of supported protocols and you can link a monitor and maximum refresh rate goes up to 144Hz as per my model. But I have to warn you that it's just 60Hz in 4K and you're about to notice that EQ14 struggles in certain conditions. There's Bluetooth available as well so that you can link as many peripherals as you want, plus something that B-Link advertised a lot this time, Intel's Unison software. Looks like a way to replicate Apple's AirDrop feature. Not as convenient, but covers a whole lot of smartphone models. Once you install the app on your smartphone, it gets very easy and quickly to transfer files to the PC. No extra cables required on top of that. If you're looking for more traditional kind of connectivity, then there are a bunch of USB ports. The Type-C on the front and the left two Type-A ports on the back are USB 3.0 and the rest is according to the USB 2.0 specifications. The older standard is perfectly fine for everything but quick flash modules. If you would like to see how EQ14 handles the stress, first comes the fan noise test. Yep, this PC is really quiet, even if the fan is working at maximum. Plus, it never gets too hot. Most times, even touching the rear radiators is safe, and the maximum temperatures are nothing too extreme. The power consumption is perhaps the nicest part, especially if your goal is to keep it at low levels. Note down that the performance per watt ratio with this kind of processor remains much worse as compared to the higher-end Intel offerings. You may be able to tune some parameters in the BIOS. B-Link continue to let you access practically everything. There's so much that could be adjusted. By default, the system is configured to limit the performance at 20 watts TDP, which sounds like a reasonable choice. 
Windows 11 Professional Edition is what we get in terms of operating system over here. Fluid, uh, safe, no bloatware, as it seems based on the few virus scans I've performed this far. I'm aware that many folks do not trust such kind of builds, so you're always free to perform a format and a clean install afterwards, or switch to another platform of your choice. Mint OS seems to work fine here, given the broad distribution of the older N100 line and the many architectural similarities, I don't expect any driver issues with most Linux distributions, means that we're free to talk about the drawbacks right before the summary. There is a single DIMM slot, means no dual-channel mode, we are locked into using DDR4, and the CPU can actually handle DDR5, there is no VESA mount, and probably I should mention the inbuilt power supply, if this should count at all. Bottom line, uh, based on the fact that the N150 is not based on the new e-cores by Intel, I think it's just a marginal upgrade over the N100, the previous generation. Apparently, there are advancements in terms of performance, same good old power consumption, and the same good old price point. Now, here's the catch. Uh, it's very fresh on the market, therefore it's going to be a few months, maybe up to a year, until we have the critical mass available so that most of the vendors start to make really good discounts on the 150 model. Uh, therefore, at the moment of making the video, I would suggest check for the best possible deals related to N100 because performance is not going to be that much different. But if you're watching this video in the end of 2025 or later than that, yeah, I feel that this could be a pretty good deal. Uh, for what is worth, B-Link once again took and adopted a new kind of a platform, implemented it in a very good way. There certainly are things that we can criticize, but overall, I think for the price point, it remains a very solid choice. So that's my take on the new EQ14 by B-Link. In case you have any questions or you believe there's something else worth sharing, I invite you to add your comments to the section below the video. In case you want to buy this body, check the video description area. And if you want to support my channel and get more practical advices about various kinds of tech, subscribe. I'm the Tech Mishka. Look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.